My name is Richie Litchfield and believe me, have we got a treat for you uh, this afternoon. Don't forget we are live and interactive. If you have got Twitter, well everyone's got Twitter, you can of course interact with us here live on the stand right now. It's at Broadcast Show or hashtag BVE14. And we're talking about beauty lighting and with me on the couch, I've got Jonathan Harris, Harrison and I've just had a bloody moment. <laughs> it's because moment. there's a Harrison and a, a, and a Harris. Harris, yeah, completely through me. How's it going? Good. Are you having yep. a good show? Yeah, very good show. Yep. Okay, so in terms of, you're both DOPs. Give yep. me a little bit of, of, of history. We'll start, we'll start with, with, with yourself. Um, I, I, well, I, I suppose my career's mostly been in commercials. I've shot movies. I've shot music videos. I love doing things like that. They're short, they're quick, they're lovely. Still tell a story, and um, I've found it, I, I, it's been really enjoyable. Yes. And you've worked with some big names, particularly in fashion as well, yes. haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes. And you're here today at the show. You've just given a, a little bit of a, yes. a seminar on how to light for beauty, beauty quickly. Yeah, beauty light. We did a beauty lighting seminar, and uh, I'm just trying to just try to actually tell people a little bit about how we do things. You know, just the basic things like the first step go to the makeup room go and see what the makeup artist is doing make sure the light is the same in the makeup room as it is on the set so there's no surprises you know send the gaffer down there get a light in there get it illuminated in the same color as you're using on the set so quite basic things really when you yes. think about it but things yes. that like i would forget about that to be perfectly honest but that that's a, that's a good tip go down to the makeup room yes i mean it's, it's very it's, interesting. I was very fortunate because I was taught, I worked with a lot of photographers, people who did a lot of beauty work um, before I became a cinematographer. And then when I became a cinematographer, I again in commercials work with a lot of photographers. It's, it's an area that I love. I love doing Excellent. What about you, Jonathan? What's your background? Me? Well, I've been sweeping the streets for quite a few years, <laughs> um, but I'm the best at it. Uh, no. My background is 13 years at the BBC and I've been freelance DOP ever since. Um, mainly big doc series and things like that. I love storytelling on film. Um, and I've done a little bit of commercial work, a bit of drama work. Um, but like Stuart, I mean, we're just passionate about what we do and trying to get, tell a really good story, whether it's a hair commercial or whether it's a, a true to life uh, film that's, you know, somebody's life story. Um, and I've spent many years on the road doing everything from one, one end of the spectrum to the other. Life, death, dramas, corporates, all that sort of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, like Stuart and I, it's, it's light. Without light, there is nothing. You know, you can have a 2K, 4K, 10K camera, but at the end of the day, you can get stunning pictures off an iPhone if it's lit properly and lighting is everything. Well in terms of you two being masters of your craft, leaders in the profession, really? <laughs> there's a lot of uh, new lights on the actual market at the moment. Which lights are exciting you in terms of like beauty? I, I think it's probably, this is probably the most exciting time ever. Uh, when, I, when I think of what we used to have and what, what's out there now, it's just unbelievable. Certainly, you know, Kina Flow, Kina Flow lights, and then how Frieda Hockheim's advanced Kina Flow lighting. Dado Vigo has done amazing things as well. I mean, it's so exciting. And then, of course, LEDs coming along. Um, and you know, the beauty of LEDs is, is that they you know, they run off very low power. So. If, you, if you're in a situation where there's no generator or anything like that, a battery's going to help you along. I mean, just later on, Jonathan does a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful demonstration with, with that stuff. He even throws them in water. You can throw them everywhere, don't you? Yeah. How <laughs> many nails him with them? Yeah. Excellent. So we are going to be talking a little bit about LED technology as well and some of the pros and cons uh, as well. Yep. What sort of lights are exciting you on the market at the moment? Well, LED is the buzzword. The problem with LED is that very few people understand the complexities of how LED lights is generated. Um, it's not just like a tungsten filament that glows and gives a continuous spectrum. 
it gives what we call a non-continuous spectrum. Um, and, and, and the dip in the spectral curve, especially for Stuart and I, is where skin occurs. And if you don't put the frequencies that are in skin tone, you won't get the colour of skin out. Light in, light out. It's the classic example. If you have a red car and put blue light on it, what colour is a car? Black. You, don't, you think, well, why would it be black? Well, if you put blue light on something that's red, it doesn't reflect. And it's the same with skin. You've got to put those sk the skin tone colours, frequencies, have got to be in these light sources to get the colour of skin out. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what colour this settee is, but if your skin looks crap, you're going to look ill, you're not going to look good. And we are paid to make people look good. Um, and hence, looking at most of the pictures here, they're looking pretty good. We are lit with Kinoflow LED sources that are colour correct, have got a full colour spectrum, and it's paramount in terms of getting high quality pictures out of a camera. Um, but there's a lot of our friends in the Far East who are just chucking out LED sources that illuminate, but they're not of a quality that we can use photographically. They need to have a full spectrum that match the colour critical environment that we're working in with the cameras. So how do you work then when it comes to using a dimmer or something like that? How do you tune the cameras with, with well, well, the beautiful thing about dimmers, on, on one level I think dimmers are, are one of the most useless pieces of equipment photographically because the minute you dim a tungsten light or even an HMI light, the colour shifts. And so if you've got, a, I went into a studio not long ago that had got about 30 different lights, they're all on different LED, uh, different dimmer settings so that the key light was one colour temperature, the fill was another, a back was another. So what do you colour balance to? You can't. The beauty about LED, and if it's set up properly, and all the Kinoflow and Dado equipment is, you can dim it without any colour shift. So that's a bonus for us, isn't it? You don't have to start gelling uh, lamps, because if you dim a tungsten light, it goes red, or towards the red, so you have to put a blue filter in to bring it back to tungsten. But with these lights, you just dim and you just lose light level, not colour shift, which is great. That's absolutely fantastic. Now, if you've got any questions for both Jonathan or Stuart, do obviously get in contact with us right here. We are completely live, and uh, we're talking about controlling our crew here as well. So do keep those tweets coming in. Jonathan's out and about right at this precise moment, so if you do want him to get a hands on a piece of kit, maybe experiment with a light or something like that, he's out and about ready to do that. So get those tweets in right now. It's at Broadcast Show or hashtag BVE14. Now we're talking beauty lighting. Um, now in terms of LED technology, and you're talking about like the, uh, our friends out in the Far East who are churning out these light panels uh, and they're not tuning right with the camera, with the camera technology. Uh, how important is it for people to invest in, this, in, in known brands, in good brands? It's important because it's one thing that if you invest intelligently, it's stuff that you will be using in 10 years time. Um, I don't know about you, how many cameras have you used in the past couple of years? Too many. Too many. Too many. That's the trouble. Cameras will shift and change and you just... I stopped buying broadcast cameras some time ago because there's too many formats, too much marketing, too much blah blah blah. But and at the end of the day... moves so quickly all the time. So. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the, the, the customers want high quality pictures. And the thing that gives that is high quality light sources. If you... I, I think uh, the, my I analogy think, is, think, is with a good wife. I think specific every, everybody's getting too immersed in specifications and technicalities and not enough in the story and not enough in telling the story, you know. All right, yeah. lenses and things like that, you know. It's just, it just gets too involved and we've got to come back. We must come back because we're hurtling forward and maybe what was behind us is good. I mean, yeah. for instance, a guitar player uses a valve amplifier. Yeah. You know, any, any great guitar player, my son plays guitar in the bands, and he uses a valve amplifier that's put on the stage, it's warmed up for three hours, and it sounds great because it's good. So can't we stop and say, that camera looks great, let's use that. Why have we got to keep forward and forward with 2K, 4K, 6K? It's doing my brain in. You know, and I think that yeah. we're getting too immersed in all of this. And yeah, back to basics, enough, isn't it? Yeah, not enough in telling the Basic stories. skills that people want to learn uh, or, or don't bother to learn because they can turn it on um, 
turn the camera on, stick a battery on the back and a, um, a, a chip in it, press the auto everything, they think they're, you know, Fellini. But there is, <laughs> pe people spend too much time spending money on technology than actually spending money on themselves, educating themselves into the deep core skills of photography and cinematography. I mean, would you use LED technology to light a beauty, a beauty, a beauty set, or would you stick with using tungsten and the yes, I would. Yes, I would. There's a light that um, that comes from uh, Kina Flow called the Celeb, which which we've have got up them here in the studio. Yeah. yeah. Now that that light, I used that. I just did a movie called Honeycomb Lodge, which comes out soon, I hope. And I use this light all the time on my on my shots of. I had a lot of very young Asian women. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was wonderful. So yes, of course I would. It's lovely, lovely. That's fantastic. So it, it, this, these are Celeb 200s, which are similar size to the the Diva Light 400. Uh, the new version of this out is twice as long. Um, the Celeb 400, which is very similar, it's sort of the LED replacement of the classic workhorse four foot four bank Kinoflow lamp. So it's replacing the fluorescent strips. Yes, uh, with but, LED technology. But, but what what it is is, I mean, I know physically you can't see light, but I don't know about you, I can feel it, don't you? Uh, and the, the feel of that light on skin is completely different from from you know an ordinary fluorescent system. It has a, a different material that the light goes through, and as it goes through that material, something happens. I mean, I'm sure you've, you've used, you use, we use silk, we use muslin, we, we stick light through different materials to get a different texture on skin or other subjects, whether it's a car or a piece of furniture or whatever. But, but the texture of that light, you've got to feel it, and, and the Kinoflow celebs have, have just got it and it does look fab on skin i've noticed on the uh, on the stand actually that some of the uh, the 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 celeb lights they've got like a, a panel on the back where you can actually change is it the color temperature yes is yeah. that yes. what you have to do yes yes you can you can dim them you can change color temperature uh, it's really really versatile light amazing light He's really worked it out. He spent a lot of time. I think he spent a lot of money as well. He's really, yeah. he's got it right. And it's not that expensive. I mean, how much are those units? I, I actually unit? don't know. Yeah. But it, it, the problem with this, it's an emerging technology that it's not just a bit of metal that you heat up like a tungsten source. It's complex. And if folks are around watching, want to come to my seminar this afternoon at, uh, at four o'clock, I'll explain exactly how it works and why you get what you pay for. Because it's, it's complex, it's not just a simple bit of technology that, okay, it can run off battery, it's heat output, okay, from the front is low, sure, but there's still heat elements within the lamp, you don't get something for nothing. Um, is and there a fan in there at all? No, not in these. <clears throat> On some of the more complex lamps, there is, but some, some are passively cooled, some are fan cooled, uh, and there are some fan uh, cool lamps out there that are virtually unusable because the fans run at such a high frequency and a noise. Um, yeah, but obviously, well, it must be quite noisy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I use the, the Ariel series, the L7s. Beautiful lights. They're a focusing light as opposed to the soft lights. Um, yes, they do have a fan, but it's carefully worked out and it works as a tool so you can actually use it in a sound studio. Um, and, you get what you pay for in emerging technologies. If you just want something to illuminate and you're not worried about what color skin, fine, buy a piece of oriental rubbish. But I can guarantee you in 12 months time, you'll chuck it out and buy another one. Most, if you're gonna buy something, buy it, buy it well and buy it once. Sorry, most, most, most importantly with beauty work is, is, to, is, that the, is the person in front of the camera should be relaxed and should be yeah. should keep cool and not sweating yeah exactly yeah. and that's where you know that's where kino stuff you know if you're going to use it it's you can, i often put the model's hand on the tube and they wow you know or the actress they can't believe it they know they're not going to sweat they're not going to perspire yeah. so already you know you're you're making the most of the makeup so that's a very important thing i know some of the leds get hot at the back but but still the you know the, the kino flow stuff is cool I, we'll come back to that in just one second yeah, because yeah. I know, Jonathan, you've got to run off because you've got another event taking place 
here in this hall. I'm going to be joined with one of the manufacturers here today from Dado. Raphael is going to be joining and replacing uh, Jonathan on the, uh, on the sofa here. We're going to carry on this discussion. If you've got any questions that you do want to ask us here, we are live. We're completely interactive. Use your Twitter feed, okay? Go onto Twitter. It's at Broadcast Show or hashtag BVE14. I've only just realized how to, or worked out how to use Twitter myself. It's taken me all this time. Anyway, we're completely live. Uh, hello, Raphael. How are you? Pleasure to see you. <laughs> Pleasure to see you as well. All the way from Dado in Munich. 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 Yes. Fantastic. So um, we've just been talking about lighting and beauty and the, the pros and cons of some of the LED technology out there and, you know, how it actually helps the talent. We're just talking about the fact that, you know, it keeps the talent cool. But from a manufacturer's point of view, you know, using dimmers sometimes affects the color balance on the, yeah. on, on, on the actual camera itself. How are you guys investing in this technology? Well, the big downside of LEDs is the beauty of having a cool light for the, for the talent. We have a lot of heat on, on the backside of the LED, which we need to get away. So the key to good colors in LED lighting is a proper heat management. And with our highly focusing lights, we have the second issue of having a tiny light source, which is intensively hot. So we need a proper heat sink, which we want passively cooled. We don't want any fan in a studio environment. Um, so none of your lights have fans in them? None of the ENG lights have. The big 200 watt LED light needs to have the a small stir. We don't want fan. We, we need a little motion to get the heat sink working. And the, all the ENG lights up to the 90 watt, we have a passive heat sink. So we never will run into an issue of having noise. Um, we're in very close contact with all the R&D departments in the LED suppliers. Um, we specify our phosphor coatings and they specify our running temperature. So our LEDs are allowed to get up to 100 degrees C and that's what we need to implement when we go into R&D for our heat sinks. So our lights will get hot despite the fact that everybody believes LED lights will be cool lights. They're cold in the front, they will get hot and you can burn your fingers on the backside of a LED source. Okay, so in terms of using dado lights and keeping the, the room cold, would you use those lights as a, as a, 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 as a, um, as a when you're lighting a beauty, a beauty scene? The first light I always put down is a dado 650, which is, which is, it's not an LED light. It's a light that dado made about eight, 10 years ago. Yeah. And, I, and I actually ha used to play with a prototype. And later on, he won an Oscar for that light. It's the, it's the most beautiful light, it has a great sharpness, it's even if you flood it, put it on a white psych and you put your light meter one side to the other, it's absolutely even. So it's a beautiful, beautiful light, very it's powerful, it's sharp. I mean, we used to have to make shadows with clear glass arcs years ago. You know, you get an arc light, you take the Fresnel out of it, put a clear glass in and then you could project the sharpest shadow. But with the Dado 650, the technology in it, because Dado is so clever at all of this, the technology is amazing. You use lenses in them as well, don't yes. you? Yes. It's a double lens system which is unique to our, to our way we construct our optics. I think what's very critical is LED light is not going to replace any other light source. It's, it's another tool. And as a professional, you know which tool to use. And a halogen light source has a spectrum which can't be uh, replaced by an LED light because an LED light has the beauty we cut the infrared we cut the ultraviolet but for image quality sometimes for good skin tones you want the infrared which is not visible but the camera can see it um, on clear whites if you need separation in white tones in closing in porcelain you need ultraviolet light so you need your HMI as a cross light you guys separation. have been heavily investing in, in, in looking at UV particularly in like museums and art galleries and looking exactly. at how light actually that, affects the paintings and stuff like that. Tell that's that. where, we, where we must avoid UV totally. If we want to light beautiful images, we light, might be shooting for a day. So it's not so much about destroying pieces of art, but getting the best results. So professional always will choose the right tool and LED is adding to the palette that we can offer to professionals to use. So it's another great tool. The big benefit of LEDs is we're cutting a lot of the heat. We're not avoiding heat we're cutting to about a quarter of the traditional tungsten sources. So which means in a new studio complex, we can start with daylight balance sources because daylight is the favored color temperature for news gathering. But until LED technology at HMIC couldn't dim HMIs properly. 
It's always, it was... I think they're a godsend, to be perfectly honest. I mean, as somebody in front of the camera, yeah. and I've just come back from India, yeah. um, and they don't have the LED uh, technology, particularly yeah. in the studio that I was working in, they have great big HMIs. Well, I tell you, it was like a sauna in there yeah. uh, by the time I came out. I had to keep going in and out of makeup, yeah. and my skin just felt lumpy yeah. at the end of it. So it is important to keep your studio cool and use yeah. the right sort of technology. So if you've got any questions that you do want to ask uh, either Raphael or Stuart, do get in contact with us using Twitter. And the Twitter address is on the screen. It's at Broadcast Show or hashtag BVE14. Don't forget, we're controlling our crew here. We're getting them working. Uh, Jonathan is out and about in the Excel Center. He's going around all the different stands. And if you can't make it down to Excel, and you've got a bit of kit that you actually do want to have a look at, and you want him to get his hands dirty and experiment with, or you've got a certain question that you want to ask us, do send us in a tweet. Now, tell me a little bit about the LED dados. Um, obviously, what we were trying to do, because Data Life became a brand name for the quality and color and sharpness. Yeah. We did want to get it right, and, and today we, we are able to offer a full range of LED lights starting with a 10 watt on camera top light, a 20 watt, a 40 watt, a 90 watt and 200 watt studio light. And we actually managed to improve the quality of the traditional tungsten light, which won an Oscar and an Emmy award, um, as an equivalent for the classic data light, which is a 150 watt low voltage system, which is very sustainable. We have a 40 watt LED light and the big beauty of, of LED lights, you can run it off batteries. And this is due to cutting the power consumption by three quarters. So instead of 150 watt, I have a 40 watt unit, which can run off a battery for over two hours. That's great for news and documentary, um, isn't it? We have the same lens system where we have two aspheric um, lenses, um, which nobody else in the lighting industry does. Typically, if we talk about aspherics, we talk about high quality lenses for cameras. Um, and this helps us to have a higher transmission and a good color rendering over the complete field of the light. And um, we improved the, the, the flood to spot ratio. So our flood got even wider as we employed LEDs. Um, is there a control on the back that you can do that with on, on this? The, the focusing unit? of the light is different to the classic lights. It focuses like, like a traditional photo lens where you have a ring and we have a double helix system, which is unique in our, uh, in our industry to, to spot and focus it. Let me switch this one on for a moment. This one is the daylight balance unit. Um, and we have a ratio of, of 60 degree down to five degree spot. If you look at the unit from the back, you can actually see through the light itself. And all the back part here is all there's, there's not a lot of sort of bleeding no, of light on no. there. That's quite it's, important, it's particularly a, if you're, uh, obviously, if you're, if you're trying to light. It's a, a passive heat sink. And for us, it was important to have the same front element. So all your accessory from the last 26 years will fit on, on the new light generation. Um, we see a very, very strong demand in daylight today. Um, for tungsten, my personal decision as a lighting designer, I really enjoy the beauty of having a tungsten source which gets warmer when you dim. On LEDs, when you dim, and have a small battery dimmer in here, when I dim, I don't change the color temperature. So the color temperature stays the same? On There's LED, no the color te temperature stays, which is fantastic for traveling shots. As the actor comes closer, you pull down the light and you don't need to filter. So this is just making your job a whole lot easier, isn't it? Well, I mean, the beauty of this is it's, it's the battery. That, that's, that's, that's the beauty of it. If you're out on location and you don't have a generator, you don't have anything, this is what's amazing. And it lasts so long. I mean, it's incredible. How long would you get, roughly? Well, that that's constantly? about two hours on, in this configuration. Obviously, as you dim LEDs, and typically, you don't need so much light anymore. You're, you're increasing the lifetime. So if you dim it halfway, so you have four hours running time. Really? Because uh, even when you dim your, your uh, lights at home in your house, yeah. okay, I get told it still drains the same amount of power. It, it does in, in, in bad calculated well. dimmers, yeah. So yeah. That's, 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 that's very clever. And, and the super model of it is a bicolor version. We actually can blend the colors from candlelight 2700 all the way to 6000 Kelvin. Um, the beauty for an end user nowadays is you don't want to run cables when you come to an interview situation. You have it already powered up, put it on a stand, take out the camera and you shoot. So reality day, today is you need to be very, very quick. Um, so all these are on display on the uh, Serilite stand. So you come down, 
get your hands on one of these, switch it on, have a go. Um, what stand is it? What stand number? It's E29. E29 is where Cyrillite are based. So come down and uh, have a look at the dados then. Okay, don't forget, we are here right the way through the day. In fact, we're here all the way, all the way through the week. We've got loads of exciting guests and products lined up for you. Jonathan, as I said, is out and about. He's our roving reporter today. And if you can't make it down here and you do want him to actually have a look at something, maybe ask a certain question, he's extremely technical. He's a technical director. Uh, he will, of course, ask that question on your behalf. Now, we've got loads of loads lined up. This afternoon, I'm talking to uh, Polcam about mini cams. So do stay with us. Keep those tweets coming in. It's at Broadcast Show. Broadcast Show. I can't get my words out. Hashtag BBE14. See you then.